Catherine, good morning. How are you? Hey, Dr. Deloney. I'm doing good. What are you doing? You having fun? <laughs> uh, you could say that. <laughs> yes. Um, I wanted to ask you, this relates to having fun. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> um, I have a newborn, <laughs> and I know I've heard you talk a lot about postpartum depression. Yes. And so coming out of giving birth, I was kind of anticipating that. And I did not realize that postpartum anxiety was a thing. And so I wanted it's to hear worst. your thoughts on that. Well, number one, I feel like I always have to give this disclaimer. Disclaimer. I haven't, nor will I ever have a kid. <laughs> I've never experienced this. And there's nothing worse than some man somewhere giving a woman advice on how her body should be feeling. It's super annoying, right? Can we all just agree on that? Right. Is that cool? Same team, yeah. same team? Okay, good. Now, uh, I have sat and walked alongside a bajillion, not a bajillion, that's a little bit overstated, um, a number of women who, again, have never experienced any of these. I have heard more horror stories about postpartum anxiety than I have postpartum depression. Okay. That it is brutal. Um, yeah. Walk me through some of your experiences. Um, okay, well, there's been a few. Oh, I hold think on, like... hold on. Just, you are the most lovely person I've talked to today. And I talked to James. I talked to James, and he's usually the most lovely. You are, because you're like, okay, I'll describe it. And I know you're about to describe some really awful stuff in your spirit. Is, you're just, oh, you're so wonderful. Okay, so well, go for you. it. How old, how old um, is your little one, by the way? She is five weeks. She was born premature, though. So okay. she's like two basically like two weeks if you if we went full term so um that in and of itself had some anxiety tied to it but yes uh, the kind of what more i'm looking for advice on is so like for example kind of on the two things that really get to me the most are at night like when i'm trying to sleep and then when i'm driving in the car and like i'll be driving this is probably the best one to start with I'll be driving and like she'll be in the back seat and I'll just be thinking like I haven't heard her make a noise in a while. I need to like pull over and mm. see if she's okay. Or like I just think in my head like, Oh, what if we get in a car accident and then she just I mean, she's in her seat, so she nothing should happen, mm -hmm. but I just think like, Oh, this is gonna happen or um at night it's kind of the same thing where I'm like trying to sleep. But then I think, oh, well, she's making a lot of noise. Maybe she's not breathing okay. Or, uh, yeah. or the opposite, I'll say I, I haven't heard her. Maybe she's not breathing at all. And then I just, like, I can't sleep. Or I'm, like, constantly, like, trying to wake my husband up. Like, hey, can you go check on the baby? And it's just exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> and never mind the fact that I'm just not sleeping, but it's exhausting to be constantly thinking, like, something is wrong or something is about to be wrong. And if I'm not fully present there, you know, it's going to be all my fault. And then she's going to be gone and all this stuff. Yes, yes, yes. So number one, thank you for saying those things out loud because I know they're scary to say out loud, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and they make you feel crazy. And mm -hmm. in, the, in the moment, they feel super real, right? So it's both mm -hmm. and, right? Yeah. Um, have you had any intrusive thoughts? about that um, the thought just pops in your head like about hurting the baby or about just running out the door and leave i mean have you had any of those two or is it mostly the no. ruminating and the worst casing it's mostly the worst casing okay. and i would say like it really comes and i just can't get it out of my head like another example and that's it's a little bit more extreme i think mm -hmm. um the first day that i was home by myself with the baby there was like a tornado warning and I literally was like one foot in the bathroom, one foot out of the bathroom. Like I can't hear the, I can't hear the sirens. I don't know if there are sirens at all. Mm. And I couldn't, I just couldn't get past this. Like, what do I do? Do I stay in the bathroom for the next six hours so that in case I can't hear the sirens, we're okay. Yeah. Or like you, I just, I just couldn't function is really good word to put. Like I just couldn't do anything. I kind of sat just there froze. like, what do I do? That's right. Yeah. So, I've got good news for you, okay? Okay. Uh -huh. you're, you're not crazy. <laughs> Thank you. You're right exactly where you need to be. And it's okay. super frustrating. 
and annoying and exhausting and you're you're okay okay all right so the the nerd word for worst casing is catastrophizing Mm -hmm. and worrying like ruminating it feels like you're those are productive thoughts because you're just on a loop right on a record player that's going 100 miles an hour but you feel like you're it's good thinking because you're trying to solve problems like I'll just mm-hmm. do this and I'll turn the wheel this way and if this happens I'll just get up I'll just get up I'll just get up right so mm-hmm. um and then you you said it so perfectly those lead to not sleeping which right. then set off your every anxiety alarm you have because sleep is the magic cure for almost everything right, <laughs> right. and then you're not sleeping and then you wake up Ding Dong, who's dead asleep next to you because he doesn't know any of this is going on. <laughs> and he wants to be like great husband, but doesn't even know what that means. And so he gets up and stumbles through. And then you feel guilty for waking him up, right? And then the whole mm-hmm. thing just loops and loops. And then tell me if I'm crazy. Then you end up a little more on alert. And the best place to go when you're on alert is a screen. To just scroll yeah. the news or to scroll Netflix and just to watch things because that's so good. And then... Right. You feel nuts, and you spend a lot more time by yourself. Is all this ringing a bell? Yeah. Okay. So here's the thing. I'm going to give you a couple of things you can do while you're in the middle of all this and a couple of things you have to do. Is that cool? Okay. Yeah. All right. Number one, be really, really nice to my friend Catherine. Okay. She has a five-week-old baby at her house. Is this baby number one? Yeah. Yes, everything you knew before now is all stupid, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. This matters so much. And then you have a kid. Nope. <laughs> when I have a kid, it's going to look like this. Nope. I'm going to have this glorious pregnancy, and my husband's going to hold my hand. It's all going to be the term, and all the music's going to be playing, and the essential oil, whatever things you – none of that happened, right? Early right. – was the C-section unplanned? Mm, yeah. Okay. It wasn't a C-section, but um, yeah, it was not planned. But early labor? Yeah, no, it wasn't planned. Okay. So one day you're just bebopping along and then you were like, oh no, this is happening. Okay. So yeah. none of those pictures look like you thought they were going to look. Okay. And mm-hmm. that's okay. What I want you to do is I want you to write down what you were hoping was going to happen mm-hmm. and then smile real big and write down with your hand, not on a, on a computer, write down what actually did happen because it's beautiful too it's just different Mm -hmm. right right and you got to make peace with the gap between what you thought and hoped was going to happen and the way you drew it up and the way pinterest said this all works and then the the just baby's going to do what they're going to do on when it comes to delivery right and then yeah when you're driving when you are spinning out at night when anxiety comes over you, the worst thing you can do with anxiety is try to fight it. Okay. Anxiety can't kill you. Okay. So right. when you have those thoughts in your head, like, oh my gosh, I'm getting a wreck. And you start holding the, the, the steering wheel tighter, right? And you keep checking right. the rearview mirror, checking and checking and checking. Catherine, your baby's okay. And what I want you to okay. do there is to say these words, I'm anxiety right now, or I'm worrying, mm-hmm. or come up with some word that has more swear words in it. That's the way I would do it. <laughs> Just call it out that it's happening. And what that does okay. for you is it separates the immediate fear as though a lion is coming after you. It separates that towards, oh, my body's just lost its mind again. It's, re- <laughs> it's recalibrating because it grew a human and then right. shot it out. And right. now it's all trying to restore itself, right? So mm-hmm. just acknowledge there's a gap between reality there. Oh, my gosh. My brain's on a merry-go-round again. <laughs> and then just ride the merry-go-round till it stops. Is it frustrating? Okay. Yes. Is it exhausting? Yes. But it will stop. And okay. when it, I got to get up, I got to get up, I got to get up, begin to gently lean into the third thing is I want you to write your fears down and then demand evidence from them. Okay. Okay. Is there a possibility? I'm going to speak really honest with you, okay? Is okay. there a possibility that your child is asleep and stops breathing? Yep, there is. Mm-hmm. SIDS. It's real, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Is it likely to happen? No. 
It's not. Not even close to statistically. Could it happen? Right. Yeah. But probably not. And what you're experiencing now is the mm -hmm. utter risk and beauty and joy and terror of loving something so much and being like letting your heart just out walk around into the world. And this is being mm -hmm. a parent. It's terrible and the greatest wonderful thing in the whole wide world. So I want you to write down these fears and I want you to demand evidence from them. Could you get in a okay. car wreck? Yeah. Is it going to happen? Almost, almost, almost in no way. Yeah, right? Probably not. Yeah. And then the last and most important thing is I want to make sure that you've got people in your life. Have a couple of people you can text. Do you have a couple of friends, girlfriends of yours that have had kids before that have been down yeah. this that you can text and say, ah, and they'll just write back, ah, and then that's it? <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. I want you to call them and say, you are now my go-to. You are my okay. whatever. Don't give me terrible advice, but just tell me I'm not nuts. Okay? <laughs> okay. And I've watched several women that I care about and folks I don't even know that well, just been in a relationship with that have used that to, it's just been such a gift, right? At 11 yeah. o'clock at night, is my body going to always, and they'll be like, nope. And you go, okay, good. And is my husband going to always, nope. Well, some husbands are idiots, but is this going <laughs> to happen? Nope. Right. Is my baby yeah. going to, and they can write back. Yeah, probably. And one day you're going to wake up and there's going to be a rash and you're going to think it is end times. It is, the world is over, right? Yeah. And then you can text your friend a picture of it and they'll say, no, that's just this. And you'll go, ah, okay, right? So having a gang with you and that gang's got to include your husband. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to make sure you're communicating with him, not in the middle of the night, not when you're exhausted, okay. not when he's all trying to be hero or whatever. Um, okay. Set aside some intentional time that y'all can just talk through. Your whole worlds are different now. Okay. He is going to try to imagine when it's going to go back to when the things were, when y'all just hooked up in the middle of a Tuesday afternoon because he came home from work early, and when y'all just got in the car and drove for a weekend somewhere. He's going to be trying to drag the past into now. Like, whenever we're going to get back to that. You hear people uh -huh. say, like, whenever COVID's over, we can just get back to It's like, homie, it ain't coming back. It's in a new world. <laughs> and then you yeah. are going to have this picture of – Oh, it's just going to be three of us, and we're going to go on walks with the stroller, and you're going to walk home, and that idiot's going to be sitting there with a video game controller in his hand or something, and you're going to lose your mind, right? So yeah. make sure y'all are communicating regularly about, hey, how are you this week? How are things this week? What did we think it was going to look like, and how is it different? It's never going to be um, the way y'all drew it up, and that's okay. What's the only not okay thing is if y'all aren't talking about it. Because then you're going to grow together. And then that's when you're going to say, man, you've been picking up that controller a lot. Are you freaked out to have a new little baby girl in your house? And he'll say, yes, I'm scared. And then you can say, you're dumb. Go hold your daughter. I'll go play. And vice versa. He could say, hey, I've seen you just scrolling on your phone a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot lately. Are you doing okay? And then he could say, no, I'm not. You can say to him, I'm not. I'm actually pretty anxious. I'm nervous. A big important caveat here, Catherine, is this. If the anxiety gets heavy... If you get to where you're not sleeping for night and night and night on night on end, make sure you're being honest with your doctor. Okay. Make sure you talk to your doctor about these things when you go in for your checkups, when you go in for the baby's checkup. Absolutely. And nothing you've told me makes me think you're broken in any shape, form or fashion. You're exactly where you should be. You've got a new, beautiful baby, five month old girl. Everything's different now. Everything's chaos. Your body's still adjusting. Your brain and heart's still adjusting. Your house is still adjusting. Everything's adjusting. But make sure you're being open and honest with your doctor, too. If things get scary, go see your doctor. If things get uncomfortable, things get dark, make sure you reach out. I'm so grateful for your call. Congratulations. And when you come visit us in Nashville and make sure you, you bring that little baby girl. I'm going to give you a couple of copies. I'm going to uh, Kelly's going to send them to you. A couple of copies of my Redefining Anxiety book. There's not a postpartum section in there because I'd be an idiot if I wrote that. But there is some really clear things you, um, you can learn about anxiety, what you can do about it. And I'm going to send you two because I want your husband to read one too. And look him in the eye and say, Re read this for me. And he will because he's trying. He doesn't know what to do. But it will help him give a picture of you. And he's probably anxious too. Okay. Thank you so much for your call and your bravery. And your baby girl is so 
so fortunate to have you as her mom.